guitar player, songwriter, singer, actor, and a damn good fisherman to boot. Jerry Reed could do it all. Self-taught at most everything, he watched and learned on his own. And what he couldn't pick up, he just figured it out. He incorporated it all into creating a musician, actor, and all-around great person who everyone loved. And yes, he was as happy on the inside as he showed us on the outside. He had a real tough start in life as a child, but he sure didn't let that stand in his way. So now let's kick back and take a look back at the successful life of Jerry Reed. Jerry Reed Hubbard was born in Atlanta, Georgia at Grady Memorial General Hospital on March 20, 1937. He lived in a few Georgia towns growing up, Fairburn, Palmetto, and Atlanta. Fairburn and Palmetto being just southwest of Atlanta. His daughter Sedina admits Jerry had a rough childhood and had every reason in the world to be a grumpy old man, but he was the complete opposite of that. His parents were Robert and Cynthia Hubbard. Jerry's parents separated four months after his birth, and he and his sister spent seven years in foster homes or orphanages. Jerry was reunited with his mother and stepfather in 1944. The first music he remembers is church music and listening to the Grand Ole Opry in Palmetto at age five. I got my first guitar at age seven and never laid it down. Mama taught me G, C, and D, and I was off to the races, son. Then when I was a teenager in the rockin' fifties, I got into the rock and roll stuff, playing gigs all around Atlanta, sock hops and stuff like that. By then I was a picker and could romp on that guitar all I wanted to. Jerry credits some of his early influences as Merle Travis and Les Paul jazz players like Johnny Smith and the great Tal Farlow. But as Jerry would often say, no Chet Atkins, no Jerry Reed. Man, that was the greatest guitar player that ever lived as far as I'm concerned. He was the most copied guitar player that ever lived, I know that. And those were my inspirations, absolutely. Jerry said meeting Bill Lowry who was a popular DJ that went into the publishing business in Atlanta was his break. He got me on Capitol Records when I was 18 and I started doing shows with Ernest Tubb, Marty Robbins, Johnny Cash, and the Wilburn Brothers. By then Jerry had been writing songs for a few years. His first record was If the Good Lord's Willing and the Creeks Don't Rise. At Capitol Records, he recorded both country and rockabilly singles with little success until label mate Gene Vincent covered his Crazy Legs in 1958. By 1958, Lowry signed Jerry to his National Recording Corporation and he recorded for NRC as both an artist and as a member of the staff band, which included other NRC artists such as Joe South and Ray Stevens. Then, in July 9, 1959, Jerry married singer Priscilla Mitchell. I told my wife when I proposed to her that if anyone has a day job in this home, it would be you, and I asked her if she still wanted to get married. She said yes. This was a marriage that would give Jerry two daughters, Sedina, born April 2, 1960, and Charlotte Elaine, called Lottie, born October 19, 1970. Jerry and Priscilla were married 49 years at the time of his death. Jerry says, right after we were married, a week later, I had to report to Fort Jackson, South Carolina to the United States Army. She was working at Lockheed, but then Brenda Lee cut a song of mine called That's All You've Got to Do. It went to number five in the nation and was the backside of I'm Sorry. Then Porter Wagner recorded Misery Loves Company, and we lived off that money until I got out of the Army and we moved to Nashville, Tennessee, 
in 1962. Jerry did session work and cut some songs after arriving in Nashville, a few songs doing okay. It was when Chet Atkins heard the song Hully Gully Guitar that he took an interest and talked to Jerry about producing. Chet told Jerry he could get the sound he was looking for. A lifelong friendship built on mutual respect was formed between the two with some great music between two guitarists. It wasn't until 1967 that Jerry recorded Guitar Man, which was on his album, The Unbelievable Guitar and Voice of Jerry Reed. It did pretty good for him as a single going to number 53 on the Billboard Hot Country Song Charts. Elvis heard the song and tried recording it, but couldn't get the sound he wanted out of the studio guitarist he had there. His producer, Felton Jarvis, told Elvis, if you want to get this to sound like the demo, you're going to have to get the guitarist who wrote it. So Jerry, who was out fishing, was tracked down and came in and got the track recorded, putting a big smile on Elvis's face. As the story goes, and this one has a lot of proof that it is true, as he was leaving, Jerry was told that for Elvis to release this song, Jerry would have to give Elvis a piece of his songwriting royalties which was a common practice by Elvis's manager, Colonel Tom Parker. Jerry looked over at Elvis smiling and all happy with the song and said, well, you're going to have to be the one to tell Elvis he can't release this song because I ain't signing anything and turned and walked out the door. Jerry's one of the only songwriters that I know of who didn't give Elvis and the Colonel a piece of his songwriting credits. If any of you know of any others, I'd sure like to hear who they are. On January 15th and 16th, 1968, Jerry worked on a second Presley session, during which he played guitar on a cover of Chuck Berry's Too Much Monkey Business, and also Stay Away and Going Home, two songs revolving around Presley's film Stay Away Joe, as well as another composition Jerry wrote, U.S. Mail. Jerry has wrote way too many hits and it would be hard to list them all. It was no surprise to me that Jerry Reed was elected to the Nashville Songwriters Hall of Fame in 2005. After releasing the 1970 crossover hit Amos Moses, a funky, rocky country Cajun style song that earned him a Grammy nomination for best male country vocal performance reached number eight on the pop charts. And then When You're Hot, You're Hot which was his first number one single and the title track of Reed's first solo album, which reached number nine pop and number six on Billboard's Easy Listening chart. The singles from the album Amos Moses and When You're Hot, You're Hot both sold over one million copies and were awarded gold disc. When You're Hot, You're Hot also earned Jerry a Grammy Award for Best Country Vocal Performance by a Male. He then did an album with his friend and producer, Chet Atkins, titled Me and Jerry, which earned the pair a Grammy Award for Best Country Instrumental Performance. Around this time, he was also a frequent guest on the Glen Campbell television show. And in December of 1972, he was featured in an episode of Hanna-Barbera's The New Scooby-Doo Movies, The Phantom of the Country Music Hall. He sang and played the song Pretty Mary Sunlight, the song is played throughout the episode as Scooby and the gang search for Reed's missing guitar. And right when his musical career was on a big roll, he decided to try some acting. Here's what Jerry had to say when first starting out. I knew I'd never be a Gregory Peck or a Clark Gable, but I thought I could be a character and a personality and pull it off. And I did. All I wanted to be was a supporting actor and God blessed me with a smash movie or two. His first movie was W.W. and the Dixie Dance King starring Burt Reynolds. Jerry played Wayne, the band leader for the Dixie Dance Kings. Along with Jerry, there was country singers Mel Tillis and Don Williams who made appearances. Reynolds liked Jerry Reed's performance so much, he later cast Reed in his first film as a director, Gator, where Jerry played Bama McCall. This was one of my favorites that Jerry did. But right after that, 
Jerry and Bert teamed up again, along with Sally Fields and Jackie Gleason to do Smokey and the Bandit, where he played Cletus the Snowman Snow, and this one was a smash hit, along with the theme song, Eastbound and Down. The song was sung and co-written by Jerry, credited under his birth name, Jerry Hubbard. The movie list goes on. Jerry acted in movies and some television from 1978 until his last movie, The Water Boy with Adam Sandler in 1998. As I said, my two favorites of Jerry's are Gator and Smokey and the Bandit, but one I also rate very high is the 1988 movie, Bat 21, where Jerry plays Colonel George Walker. It's with Gene Hackman and Danny Glover in starring roles. It's a very good movie, so if you haven't seen it, check it out if you get a chance. If you have a favorite Jerry Reed movie, let me know about it in the comment sections. I'd like to hear. In 1993, Jerry and Chet Atkins teamed up once again for another album and won another Grammy for sneaking around. Jerry has been nominated for the Grammy Award nine times and winning three of those times. He has also won a People's Choice Award for Favorite Supporting Actor in a Motion Picture for Smokey and the Bandit and is a two-time CMA Instrumentalist of the Year winner, and the list goes on and on. Jerry Reed was elected to the Nashville Songwriters Hall of Fame in 2005. He said he was very happy and satisfied with his career. He wasn't elected to the Country Music Hall of Fame until 2017. That's nine years after his death on September 1st, 2008. I sometimes wonder if the powers that be in Nashville waited so long to elect him because Jerry started acting right at the height of his music career. Jerry himself said there was resistance from the Nashville music industry. Record people didn't want me taking the time away from my music, he recalled. But between me and you, I'm glad I did. So even though I think Nashville waited too long for whatever their reasons, I'm sure Jerry was happy and satisfied with the way his career turned out. His wife Priscilla passed away September 24, 2014. So his two daughters, Sedina and Lottie, accepted Jerry's Hall of Fame induction award for him. Jerry's guitar playing was his own style. So was his singing, and so was his acting. His guitar finger picking style was so unique Many have tried to copy it, but few ever really succeeded. I think the main reason Jerry Reed was so successful in his career and in his life was he didn't try to be somebody he wasn't. He was just himself, and most everybody just loved who he really was. I hope you enjoy this video on Jerry Reed. If you have anything to add, please feel free to do so in the comments section. I know there's much more about him that wasn't all covered here. As always, if you see fit, subscribe and share the video. Give me a thumbs up too. Thank you all for watching.